Hello there, I am no nickname. It's been a while since I've made one of these videos, a player versus player video. So I'm making up for it by making a hell of a long one right now. Uh, this is a champion mode game that I played a couple of days ago. And there are a couple of reasons I decided to choose this game. First of all, it is a good game. And it goes all the way to age 4 into the late game. And secondly, a patch has been released quite recently called the Summer Update, which, amongst other things, uh, changed up the technology tree of the game quite a bit. So the game itself was actually changed quite a bit. Uh, this is especially important for uh, the PvP part of the game, because obviously changes like that matter in the game for balance reasons and general gameplay reasons and such. And I actually quite like the changes, but we'll look more at those uh, later. Right now let's focus on what's actually happening on the screen. And right now that is my scout moving across the map to find the enemy. I am uh, hunting for food there at my base. And also notice that I actually uh, transferred my villagers from the berries to the hunts immediately as soon as I found them. I didn't even build a storehouse next to the berries. And that is because uh, huntable animals are gathered faster than berries. Now, uh, one of the changes uh, in this uh, new patch is that the hunting dogs upgrades, which increases the gathering uh, speed of huntable animals, was actually. Uh, the cost of that upgrade was actually increased quite a bit. Before it cost like. Uh, I think it was about 80 wood and 50 gold. And now it's actually 150 wood and 50 gold. So, getting that early, like right after you got your first storehouse isn't exactly viable anymore. It is however still uh, better to go for the huntable animals than the berries because even without the upgrades and even if you did get the bear upgrade the huntable animals would still be gathered faster. But it has been nerfed a bit. And I'm actually not quite sure why they did that but uh, I suppose they had the reasons. So now I'm actually building a barracks. Uh, I kind of failed a bit there by starting to make it with my food builders until I realized that I actually need food. So I uh, changed it to my wood, village, wood villagers instead. And once I have 15 builders and the required resources to age up, I am going to do that. You can see I'm spamming that button right now. And I believe the uh, my opponent, who is named Poldus actually ages up quite a bit faster than me. I think he aged up before I even started. So that's interesting. He must have actually aged up with fewer villagers than me because it wasn't much time between my villager training and the actual age up happening. So he probably aged up with around 12 villagers. And as a result of that, I am actually outscoring him right now by a small amount. Uh, I made that barracks actually before I started edging up, which uh, I find to be quite nice. Because it allows me to get a couple of spearmen before... Uh, well, well, I mean while I'm aging up. And it doesn't really delay my age up anyway, because I'm going for a 15 villager age up. So I actually have time to make that barracks and still be able to advance the end age almost right after I've gotten those 15 villagers. Also kill its scout there, that's nice. So now I'm getting my second military building, an archer range. And what I usually like to do is to go for a nice balanced uh, army with one barracks, one archer range and one stables right at the beginning. You see here that he has a barracks and an archer range, so my combination should be quite good at handling that. I won't, however, uh, train Spearman then, of course, because he doesn't have any cavalry, but Hypospists and Toxitus combined with some Sarasov, right, to flank his archers and also raid his builders should work quite nice against that. So I actually messed up my 
a villager count on the different resources a bit here. You can see I actually only have two villagers on food right now, which is, needless to say, not enough. I didn't realize I took that many off food actually, so I'm putting a bit more of them on food now. And a scout died there, that's unfortunate, but I'm getting less stable now anyway, so it, it's not a huge deal. So I'm putting more village on food now, so I can actually make food costing units. I don't think two villagers is enough to even sustain uh, villager production, so not very good. But I'm getting more of them now, and actually making several star houses there to limit the walking time of my villagers while they're gathering food. I'm placing my houses uh, strategically there too, kind of walling in my wood villagers a bit to protect them from raids. I uh, am doing it there because, first of all, it is kind of close to my town center, so the enemy can't just snipe my houses with uh, a quick army and just get out again. That would uh, kind of be bad because of the wood population, and also because the wood is, of course, a resource that lasts long. I'm going to be chopping from that forest for quite a bit, so those houses will be protecting my villagers for quite a bit. Now I'm starting to train up those first Sarasophroys. My intention is to raid him with those, because he doesn't seem to be rushing. At least not right now. I actually have a bit too little gold there. My economy, my, my economy management early in the game wasn't exactly good, but it gets better uh, later in the game. I actually still uh, have a slightly higher score than he does, as you can see in the top left corner of the screen. So that's actually quite interesting, even though I'm kind of failing. That's a the bad health placement, I want to build farms there. So I'm uh, moving up with a couple of Sarasophroi now to scout this base and if the opportunity presents itself, kill some villagers. Oh man, I'm uh, house blocked now actually, that's not good. So let's see what's actually in this base here. He has uh, built another barracks, it seems. That's a couple of food builders. I'm gonna try to force them off their resources, but his army shows up and I'm trying to check out exactly how large that army is. Now, it was quite large, it's, uh, certainly larger than mine. So, I'm going to be building uh, another, another stable there, seeing as he had quite a lot of archers. And I find that actually getting a quite high amount of Sarasophora is usually actually is actually quite good because even if I kill all of his archers, those uh, Sarasophora can still be used for raiding. So I can uh, keep in this in this base if I actually manage manage to kill his army. So no reason to only get a few of those, even though even just a few can actually be very effective against archers. Population block there again, that isn't ideal, of course. And I'm going to have to go for those berries now because my hunts are running out. There are actually portions of the map here I haven't exactly explored, and if my scout hadn't died, I probably would have, but I seem to have forgotten to do that. And that actually kind of hurts me later in the game, as you will see because there are actually resources there that I need. And that is of course the reason why you always want to explore as much of the map, especially close to your base. That's very important because even if there's just a little black spot there, that can be the location of a gold mine or something. So we want to check it out. Early in the game with your scout is of course best because you don't have that much other else to do anyway. Now I sent one Sarsofra out there to scout, and it certainly paid off because I see that he's actually planning to attack me. 
Now I think our armies are about equal sized. Mine maybe looks a bit smaller, but I have quite a bit of Sarasophroi, so... And those are quite good. They are a two population unit, so... Yeah, it's, I think I actually outnumber them slightly population-wise. Now I'm not going to go out and actually attack him. Uh, he is only attacking storehouses that I don't need anymore anyway, so I don't really care that much about that. Uh, he is attacking something I need there though, my builders, and too late to save them, so I'm just gonna let them gather for moves a few more seconds before they die. So I'm actually just staying in my base, and my plan is to actually draw him into my base and try to fight him here. Uh, because then I will be on the home field, uh, I will have the home field advantage, I mean. Which uh, not only lets me reinforce my army quicker, but uh, it also lets me take advantage of my building placement, which uh, I did do intentionally. You see, I've kind of made a semi-wall with them circling around my town center. So I can actually place my infantry in the gaps there and keep my archers behind there, so the, the enemy won't actually be able to get to my archers. And I also have some uh, larger holes in my wall there, so my cavalry can get out and try to flank his archers, if that uh, seems to be possible. Now his army seems to have vanished, so I'm sending out a couple of art, uh, to scout that. He doesn't seem to be attacking, and that's fine by me. Of course, never want to be attacked. Well, most of the time, actually. Sometimes it is good to be attacked because that lets me kill this army. Now, as you see on, see on the minimap there, and as I showed you now, his army is actually way up there for some strange reason. I'm not quite sure why. I'm not going to push out to attack it yet, though. There's not really any reason to do that other than trying to kill it, but I would probably lose quite a bit of my uh, army and. As you can see, I'm uh, slightly outscored right now, so that means that it probably has the economic advantage, if not the military advantage. Now here he is actually attacking me, and I kind of fail here, because I wasn't expecting those infantry to show up from the side there, so my cavalry kind of get trapped between the gold mine and stone mine and those units. I do manage to get them up to my, uh, um, I mean to the opponent's archers eventually. I'm doing quite a bit of damage there, even though my all of my infantry actually died. So as long as I keep my Sarasophora attacking the archers, I should be fine, because the archers can obviously deal with the infantry fairly well. Now, uh, my economic management is hurting me now because I actually have very little food. So, I mean, I can reproduce my archers just fine. But I didn't really lose any of them anyway, so that's not what I want to prioritize. So I'm not actually going to be able to produce much of an army immediately right now. I did kill his though, so I should be able to survive, but it's still not optimal. I'm going to have to move my gold villagers there too, because my the gold mine in my base actually ran out. I'm splitting them up, splitting them up to avoid all of them being tracked by the enemy army, so I have a, even if some of them die, I still have a source of gold. Now he actually made his army back quite quickly, and that is probably because he actually has an economy that works, which I don't. I have very little food. But I'm still going to try to raid him a bit, and there's actually a stray builder that I at least managed to force off gathering. A very minor picture there. Uh, I was getting the horsemanship upgrade, uh, and that is one of the new upgrades with this new patch. I actually cancelled it to age up to the third age instead, but what that upgrade does is to increase the speed of uh, cavalry. And that's all of the units that are produced at the stable. Uh, there is a second upgrade that also increases speed, 
which uh, has that horsemanship of upgrade as a prerequisite. And I believe there's also a third one that increases uh, hit points and attack and maybe also speed. Now if we combine that with the uh, upgrade for Sarasophora, and that is a champion upgrade, I'll get back to that later. Well, actually I'll explain it now. Uh, champion upgrades uh, are the new upgrades for units, basically. Now before, uh, each unit had a number of upgrades that increased their hit points and attack. Uh, that system is gone. Uh, every unit now only has one unique upgrade, but that is actually an unique upgrade. It doesn't merely increase hit points and attack, and quite often it actually doesn't do that, but it uh, increases other stats and gives them uh, unique abilities or changes their role a bit. Now, for example, uh, the Sarasophora champion upgrade, uh, which they are called, uh, I mean, which I was talking about, uh, increases the speed of Sarasophora, and it also gives them 40% more range. And that's a quite nice upgrade. If you combine that with the speed upgrades from the stable, those Sarasophora can be quite damn fast. So, they're certainly viable as raiders and scouters late in the game as well. Uh, other unique upgrades, for example for the Hepus Beast there, uh, I believe it increases their hit points and movement speed, which lets them fight off units such as Vault Raiders more effectively. And yeah, for example for the uh, Hoplite, which it actually increases, uh, uh, I believe it's bonus versus cavalry and also 50% increased Pierce armor which makes them better in general, both against cavalry and actually against archers as well. Now they're not going to kill archers outright, but they will survive more shots from them. Speaking of archers, there was actually another change uh, for those as well. I'm getting a new town set here, by the way, because I've aged up to the third age. But uh, um, I lost a couple of units there. But the archers, uh, as you may have seen, or as you may have experienced playing the game, of course. Actually, now don't instant fire when they attack anymore. Instead, they uh, have a small setup time for their attack. Actually, it's a rather long setup time. I believe it's something like one and a half seconds. So, hit and running, or kiting, or whatever you want to call it, with archers has been uh, nerfed quite a bit, which. Uh, was a balance problem previously in the game, so it's probably good that I did that. I'm getting all of the H3 economical upgrades now. Those are always nice to have. And you should get them as soon as you can, basically, because uh, your economy will suffer if not. And um, what I'm doing now is actually just booming as much as I can, because I am under in score and I think I'm under in army as well, because of my failed economy. So I'm just booming as much as I can to get as many resources as I can, to try to even up that score and, well, the score isn't like everything in the game of course, but it's a good indicator of how things are. And seeing as I am uh, kind of close to my max population uh, capacity. I'm, uh, never mind. I thought I was gonna say I'm not gonna make more units, but apparently I am. Either way, I'm getting more upgrades for my units. All those champion upgrades. Uh, the champion upgrades are available in the age after the unit is available. So in age 2 you actually only have one for the spearman. Age 3 you get uh, for other units and of course, age 4 units, there isn't an age after age 4, so you can get that upgrade in age 4. And the age 4 ones are actually quite nice too. Among, among others, the hoplite upgrade, which I was talking about. I'm scouting out this base again now to see where his army is at, and also if he's gotten any more buildings or if he's gotten a new base or something like that. And it seems like he has, because as you can see on the minimap, in the left corner there, uh, those are actually farms. I don't look at them right now, but 
yeah, yeah, there they are. Those are farms, and I believe he has a town center right next to them, so that means that he has advanced to the third age as well. And uh, I actually only got a market there uh, because I saw that he did. Uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, that's how I often get the market because I forget it until I actually see an enemy market, and I should probably work on that. But I only had a couple of caravans now anyway, so it's not a big deal. Uh, caravans are only really a big deal once all the gold mines run out because obviously you need gold. I'm getting the second set of. Uh, upgrades in the buildings there, uh, military buildings I mean. In addition to all of the champion upgrades, there are also a set of three upgrades in each military building, that is the barracks, archer range and stable. So there are three upgrades that affect all of the units from that building. For example in the stable we have the speed upgrade ones and I believe the ones in the archer range increase their line of sight which is quite nice for archers, obviously, because you don't want to run them into your enemy's army. And infantry, I believe it increases uh, their training speed, or decreases their training time, whatever you wish. And that's actually quite nice. I believe the first one is minus 20%, and next one is minus 50%. So it actually allows you to train infantry twice as fast. So you can make them quite fast actually, you'll see that later in the game, when I have like 8 barracks constantly producing hoplites at very f uh, quick speeds. I'm sending out those uh, remaining sarsophras I have to scout, I'm not going to be using those mostly for the rest of the game. I could have, but I decided to use other units instead. I'm pulling those villagers off there to complete my fortress by the way, because there's always army there. Uh, uh, the reason I placed it there is, well first of all it's in front of my base, so it makes it, it, makes it harder for him to attack, but it's also close to those, uh, uh, that stone mine and the gold mine, which allows me to retreat my villagers quickly if he attacks from that angle. And not losing villagers is something you generally want to do. And now I'm actually aging to the 4th age. I am actually population blocked, so I have no other choice. Uh, I'm also getting an army there, so... I noticed that I am still uh, under in score. So basically what I'm going to do is sit here and defend. He, he doesn't have the army to kill me outright, I think. At least that's not what I've scouted. If he starts getting siege or something, then I'm in trouble. But he isn't doing that now. So I'm uh, going to basically just sit in my base and broom as much as I can, get to the maximum 200 population, and get as many upgrades as I can for my army. So that when I finally start fighting him, I will be prepared. And as you can see, it is kind of working. I'm narrowing the gap between our scores there. Also scouting at his base, he has a quite nice economy. A lot of farms there at least. And our scores are basically even right now, so my strategy is working. At least score-wise it's working. I'm not going to be making more villagers now, I'm instead going to focus on caravans because I actually thought I was running out of gold mines. Uh, it turns out I wasn't. Uh, because of uh, I hadn't actually explored much of the black map there, and uh, south on the minimap, where there's black, there is actually a gold mine, and also you see in the right corner uh, there, there's also a gold mine, and I didn't actually know about those, so I won't be any, uh, only limited to caravans just yet. Also getting the upgrade there because I'm population kept and can't use the market for anything else right now anyway. Well, until I lost those units and I'm replacing them with caravans. And now I'm actually ahead in score again. I believe I stay ahead for pretty much the rest of the game. 
because my economy is actually starting to get better than his now. I am uh, in the fourth age, which allows me to get a fourth town center, which is Hobbs building down there, uh, right there actually. And there I found that other gold mine as well. Which I was actually kind of relieved by finding those two gold mines because if I hadn't, then I would be in a bit of trouble. Because setting up a trade route takes a while. And those caravans don't exactly train instantly, and caravans aren't really that good of a gold source anyway. So, you need to have a lot of them, and you need to make sure their path isn't blocked by houses, like mine actually is there, right? I do believe I start deleting some of those houses later to open up the path a bit. So the game has kind of passed into a kind of stalemate. I mean, I noticed earlier he was getting a wall there. To counter this, I'm getting a palintman from my fortress. I'm. Uh, those aren't very common in ga in games actually, but. Uh, I think they're quite nice, I'm actually not sure why they're not used more. And also I didn't want to invest in a siege workshop right now. Uh, I actually am making several more buildings now, because uh, even though I, uh, I'm basically at full population, uh, if he attacks me I will lose a portion of my army, and I've already seen that he is able to reproduce his army uh, quite quickly. So I want to be able to do the same, otherwise he will, well, basically outnumber me. Uh, along with that I'm getting the armor upgrades, and when you are population at the maximum population, uh, that's something that's very nice to do of course, because you aren't using the resources for anything else anyway. Getting those upgrades actually forced me to gather stone though, because uh, one of the changes with the recent patch uh, is that those army upgrades uh, actually cost stone. Uh, I believe they're, they have changed a bit too, there are less of them, but they are more effective. And they are a bit more historically correctly named. I think they have uh, act actual names now instead of just uh, whatever they were called earlier, I think the names weren't very good. But yeah, they have been actually changed up a bit, so stone is a more important resource now, especially late in the game. And it's always been a late game resource, seeing as uh, unless you're spamming walls or something, or towers, then you're only really using it for town centers and fortresses. Now you're also using it for uh, armory upgrades, so it has become a quite more important resource. If you are somehow able to block your opponent from gathering stone for instance, you can get those armor upgrades while he can't, which is uh, obviously good for you. Still scouting around here with those Saras and his armor isn't there so I'm gonna just attack him. And there is a reason his armor isn't there, as you can see on the minimap min min right there, he's actually attacking. Uh, and his army is quite a bit... Uh, well, quite, not quite a bit larger than mine, but it's quite large, and actually, yes, it's, it's quite a bit larger than mine. I believe I have more villagers than he has, but I, he has more of an army than I have. Now, we are in my base, so that actually favors me, I think. At least in this particular situation. Because I was able to position my units fairly well there. My archers are behind the uh, wall of buildings there. The infantry are blocking his infantry for the time being, and I got my sort of right up to his archery, but I got slaughtered because there are too many of them. Uh, it's a quite even battle right now. Uh, he actually has a couple of hippogons coming into my archers, but I managed to kill them. I'm also making hippogons of my own right now uh, to counter all of his archers. Uh, the up uh, the hippogons have a quite nice champion upgrade by the way. It's called it's uh, which reduces the population cost of those hippogons by one. So uh, you can basically get 50% 50, uh, 50 more hippogons. Uh, as you see, I am able to push him away and attacking him with my hippogons uh, because he only has archers. So I'm just going to try to do as much damage to his archers as uh, I can. 
I'm trying to get that upgrade now, but I have a bit uh, too little gold. I believe I get it uh, right about now. Yes. I also got some Peltas there to counter his uh, archers, which turned out to be quite helpful. And uh, if you just look at the hoplites there that are being trained, they're being trained extremely fast. Uh, basically 50% faster than uh, the original speed. No, yeah, yeah actually 50% faster. So, uh, if you have a lot of barracks like I do, then you can make a, a lot of hoplites. And hoplites, being infantry, and being slow infantry, and basically being a mid-shield unit, are units that you are pretty much expecting to, to lose a lot of. Uh, they don't live uh, very long in a battle. Well, they live quite long, but uh, when the battle is done, you are more likely to have a lot of archers, then you are to have a lot of hoplites, unless you only had cavalry or something, then, you are, then the situation is of course changed. But as you can see here in the past few battles, uh, my archers have survived, but my infantry hasn't. Because they are being used as mid-shield to keep his army from my archers. And that makes me win the battle, but lose all of my infantry. And that's of course better than losing the battle. I'm getting the last set of upgrades all over the place here, both for my armory and the uh, military buildings, and he seems to have discovered my town center there, by the way, that's not good. I am being forced to evacuate my villagers away from my base, and hopefully I won't see them. And also he's interrupting my trade route, so I'm actually for, uh, going to be moving that to, my town, to the town center on the other side of uh, my base quite shortly. Which is a separate route anyway, because it's behind my base instead of out in the open there. Now his army is quite large, and I may be able to use my buildings for defense here, but I still am in kind of trouble here, because he has quite a bit of units that counter mine. My infantry are evaporating, and he has a lot of peltists who actually counter my archers of course, so that's not good. Now, uh, I am able to hang on here, barely, at least for the time being, although my army is actually dying quite quickly, I can see the population counter going down, and the result now is basically I have archers inside his peltists, and that's a good. My uh, infantry is basically gone, I have one brave hoplite out there, but he is going to be killed pretty soon, I think. Actually, he might be able to hang on. Yeah, he's hanging in there, forcing that enemy army to uh, escape. So I was able to hang on there, barely. And this has shown by the way that I need more gold, so I'm going to make more caravans. Now, those few hippos there aren't exactly good at meat shield against uh, all the stuff he has. But yeah, I have Gastropetus now, which are well, very long ranged, and also have a very nice uh, champion upgrade, which actually reduces their. Uh, well, I, well, I mean, it increases their rate of fire. It kind of uh, decreases the time it takes for them to fire a shot by 25%, that's what I'm trying to say. So their rate of fire is increased, I suppose. And I'm still short on gold, uh, and I think I actually noticed that, yeah, right now. And uh, I decided to delete a lot of these houses here, because they were obstructing my trade route quite badly, severely increasing the time it took for my um, caravans to actually move between the town center and market there. And that's not good, and especially because of the horrible passing of caravans. They are very easily stuck inside small openings, which I suppose is uh, actually quite realistic considering all the stuff they have on their backs, but still it's quite annoying. I'm scouting out with my Hippigans here now, 
I basically switched from uh, making source of right to making hippogates. And I've also replaced most of my hippos beast by, uh, I mean, with hoplites. So my armor composition has changed a bit because these units are better, basically. And that composition still counters on, well, pretty much everything. Especially with those gastropedes and a couple of cultists in there as well. And I actually managed to slip into his farms there, and that's quite nice. I, I think he, as a result, makes more walls. <laughs> uh, but now I was able to kill a couple of his villagers there, I think. And that's always helpful. And I think they were trying to get out of there, those cavalry, but... Uh, not very successful that. And that Polinton uh, is actually going to be proved to be quite uh, helpful later in the game because uh, Polintonans do a lot of area damage, and if you can focus that onto like a big uh, batch of uh, archers, then that can actually hurt them quite a bit. I think Ballistas do a better job at this, but uh, I actually prefer Polintonans because they're because of the long range, and uh, I don't know, I think it's something about my playstyle which kind of involves uh, kind of sitting around <laughs> and shooting at stuff from afar. I don't know. Well, I suppose it's called camping, and people don't like it, but uh, it's a good strategy. So here is tr he's trying to attack again. I almost ran my hippocans into his army. So it's probably gonna, gonna be coming from that angle again uh, quite soon, I believe. Anyway, I'm going to be moving out with my hippocans and maybe try to kill some stuff. Unless he, of course, shows up to kill my stuff, which he is doing now. So, now my score is actually uh, ahead of his. I have more villagers than he does, I'm, f I'm fairly sure of that. I s that allows him to have more of an army, but I'm not going to be attacking just yet. Uh, my plan for this game is definitely to go into the late game, so... Uh, uh, well, basically, as l the longer it lasts, the more of an advantage I have, and you can also see that on the score there. Because it's I'm uh, continually gaining an advantage there. His score is uh, dropping in relation to mine. And there he is actually attacking. I'm not sure I've seen that yet. Now, so it, uh, I think he's planning to go for my town center actually. And that's something uh, that is actually quite good to do late in the game. Because it limits the population of your opponent. In this case being me. And... And, uh, well, basically town centers take a while to replace. You can, of course, make, uh, you make them with a lot of villagers, which uh, is fairly quickly, but... Uh, you often don't need much time to do a lot of damage in age 4. So I'm actually rebuilding that town center in a slightly less risky location. And behind those trees there. I don't, and I don't think he has seen those farms there. So I'm actually going to continue to use those, because if he had seen them, then I'm fairly sure he would have attacked them to kill my daughters. Now, uh, yes. I'm pretty sure I start attacking in like 5 minutes, maybe 10 minutes. Because I'm realizing that I'm gaining an, an economical advantage. So, that means I can afford to spend more resources on units. And if I keep that up, then basically I should overpower him eventually. Now, of course, uh, that is one way to win. Another is to employ uh, sneak attacks and stuff on uh, 
for example, his trade route, which I also decided to do a bit later. Right now, however, he is attacking me again. Uh, from a supposedly surprise an ang uh, angle, but I actually had builders there, so I was able to see it. Uh, he probably actually didn't expect me to have anything there, because I'm fairly sure he hadn't scouted there uh, after I built those farms. So, uh, yes, yeah, I think my town's in yeah, of course, because I rebuilt that other town center. I was going to say my town center may be alive down there, but it isn't. So, there's actually not much reason for me to go all the way down there. I'm just going to stay in my base for the time being. And he's either destroyed that wall, but he had builders there to rebuild it immediately. Uh, he has found my other town center. And I'm forced to go out to protect that. I'd rather not, but I am forced to do it. Because he has the arm. Oh, yeah. There he actually comes in with. I mean, you thought his army was large uh, before that uh, huge bunch of software came in, but uh, you saw their speed there. That was uh, what I was talking about with the. I believe it's four different speed upgrades, which uh, uh, increases their speed by a total of 35%. And they're not slow to begin with, so that's a lot of speed. Now, they do a surprisingly small amount of damage to my archers. Uh, I'm able to kind of escape into my buildings, and even with the range boost they get from their champion upgrade, they still haven't gotten... they still don't have that much range. Combine that with the quick training infantry, and I'm actually able to hang on with my archers there. Those farms down there are a bit more risky now, however, because he actually knows about them. So I'm probably going to be moving with those villagers. And I'm actually scouting with siege weapons. Uh, that's not very common, but as long as his army is elsewhere, then uh, why not? It's not like that Plintonin would do much uh, for me right now, anyway. Uh, he actually barely managed to snipe off that uh, town center, unfortunately for me. So I rebuilt it in a different location. And no point building it in the same location, because then he would know exactly where to attack it, so... I'm just changing my base up a bit as he destroys it. To kind of force it to scout for it, instead of just attacking it. Continually making more military buildings as well, just so I can replace those units faster, uh, I mean as fast as possible. In H4, units die very fast, so uh, you want to have quite a lot of uh, military buildings. And my infantry squad there is uh, small, basically. And I was going to try to protect that Palintan there to maybe do some damage, but I'm just retreating it because that wouldn't work very well. Those cavalry actually survived though, so I'm going up to his uh, farms here to wreak some havoc here. And I'm actually able to kill quite a lot of villagers. You can see those XP signs flying up into the air. 1 XP, 1 XP, 1 XP. And that obviously feels good to do in a game, especially when I already am ahead quite a bit in score. He actually just runs in with more builders to replace them immediately, even though my cavalry is still there. Which is kind of odd, but he had a uh, prodrome off there anyway to counter my cavalry. And I'm actually going for that, uh, those farms down there again, hoping that he won't... Uh, Attack them. He destroyed my storehouses, so I think he actually didn't expect me to do that. Either way, I'm going for it, so. Yeah. I'm producing quite a lot of Hipkins, and those are the units that actually seem to die the most for me. They're also the units I'm using the most strategically, so. to try to cause damage. I actually outscored him in a 2 to 1 ratio right now. And that's quite nice. So. And there is actually coming in a huge army. And now I'm in a quite a bad position because 
I don't have much infantry and my archers are out and open. And he's actually going for my Palintina there, but I am able to defend it. So, my army is kind of dying. I still do have the home field advantage. Uh, I'm not attacking uh, him yet. But actually, it's, uh, I, think, I think I was looking at the scores and... After this battle is over, I think I actually do decide to start pushing out. Because his economy is... Uh, quite a bit worse than mine. I mean, even though he killed most of my army, I'm still uh, ahead in score. I did replace that army though, so... I'm still at full population. And uh, seeing that, I think we can conclude that economy matters more to the score than in uh, army. So now I'm actually pushing out. And... This is gonna take a while. Because he... Uh, he still has a good economy, I think. I mean, I have a, a bit too much economy almost. I have like 12,000 food and 15,000 wood, 10,000 gold. So that's certainly nice in case all my villagers decide to die. Then I will still be able to make units for a while. Which is useful. I actually have 96 villagers. So he, has, he still has an army population advantage. Uh, I'm still attacking him though, because I'm basically just relying on being able to uh, produce army, I mean my army quicker than he has, uh, is able to. He seems to be able to produce an army quite fast anyway. But at least now I uh, kill this army there fairly effectively. Most of my infantry even survived, which is uh, uncommon. So I'm uh, going to attack his wall now. There he is coming with anti-infantry units though. Not ideal for me. Now, the distance between my buildings and the uh, base of my opponent here is quite large. So I probably want to make some... Uh, more buildings here, and yeah, speaking of buildings, there they are. I'm going to be starting to make buildings there to be able to reinforce my army quicker. And I'm even getting, getting an academy now, it's death late in game. When you use his academies. So I think I actually only got that because I saw his flaming arrows there, and I got jealous or something, I don't know. Those flaming arrows are an upgrade from the academy, in case, in case you didn't know. So I'm just gonna try to annoy him a bit and maybe kill off a storehouse, try to draw him out. I am at 200 population, so technically I'm at the well, the maximum of what I can get my army to be. So there's no reason not to attack. I'm eating a plus forest though, quite effectively, and he's actually making a second layer of walls. Luckily for me, I'm able to slip past that just in the nick of time and kill some builders. Getting the last set of army upgrades there too, just to make my army the most effective. Well, uh, that didn't work very well, but I still killed a couple of builders. Yes, yeah, so I seem to be very aggressive with all Clintons. He's actually surprisingly enough not attacking them, which uh, I find a bit odd because he has fast cavalry, so I could just run in with a couple of them and kill them, but uh, he seems not to be doing that. Instead, if he's going for a bit more turtling style with walls and fortresses, which I'm going to kill now, and actually run in here because. I'm fairly certain, I was fairly certain that uh, his trade route was there, and I was right. So I'm going to snipe off that market. 
attempting to shut down his uh, gold supply. I do believe he has several markets uh, somewhere though, so it won't immediately shut it down, but it certainly will help, because that was his longest trade route, and thus the one that produced most gold. I'm at least killing those fortresses though, and my cavalry actually was able to uh, escape his army. They went all the way north there. So I'm, you can say that I'm, I have the advantage now. Now I'm the one attacking uh, constantly instead of him being that one. So I'm pressuring him basically. I'm not going to walk into his bar uh, base right now. I'm gonna try to do so, but I'm not gonna like just run into it and kill everything because that would be a stupid idea. Actually, I'm um, chopping wood there right next to his base. Uh, that would be a stupid idea because, uh, I mean, attacking his base, not chopping wood, uh, because he would actually obliterate my army then. He has quite a bit of uh, buildings, of course, so he would be able to destroy my army quite well then. And those Gastropethes are annoying. Uh, there's. Even though archers are nerfed, they are still good. So, if you have something to protect them, like buildings or a wall, then uh, they can do a lot of damage. That's kind of what archery is all about. Doing damage from afar. So I'm attempting to kill him. Uh, it's not working. Because he actually is killing me. I'm trying to run in there and kill his archers with Hippicans. There are a bit too many of them though. I was able to slip through the trees there, that's uh, still quite nice. So I'm at least killing some. And spamming more of those quick little trained hoplites. Hoplites are basically a spammable unit late in the game. Which. Uh, isn't really what you think when you hear a hoplite, I suppose, because a hoplite is, is supposed to be a powerful unit, but with powerful and spammable, which is very nice. My trade route was quite clumped up there, but I'm still getting. I still have 14,000 gold, so it can't be that bad. My score is way higher than my opponent's score right now. And I'm making more buildings here. Well, I made my buildings earlier, I mean. So, I can basically... I will outlast him. And I'm still going to try to make some... Uh, nice maneuvers to... Maybe sneak in a few... Uh, important building kills there. You see, I'm moving up my pollutants. And my attention is to actually... Snipe that town center, which he has near the... Left corner of the minimap. I'm going to try to shoot over that forest and kill that town center there, which I was just putting it. And Palatinans are very high range units, so that will actually work, I believe. Yes, they are able to kill that town center. I'm moving in with my army here too, because he is almost bound to try to kill those Palatinans. So I'm going to try to protect them. I was actually trying to repair that town center, but uh, I think I am able to kill it anyway. So some interesting micro I'm trying to do here. Uh, I actually got my cavalry slaughtered, but otherwise it worked fairly well, I suppose. At least they weren't able to kill my archers, so that's good. I'm attempting to use my blinkers now to the damage to his archers, and as you can see, it's quite effective. Uh, well, at least when they actually hit something. We saw they killed like uh, eight archers in one hit there. Uh, that's quite nice. I'm not saying that Plintonets are like this super unit that everybody thinks is bad or something, but uh, they are a bit underused. 
in my opinion anyway, I might be totally wrong on that, but actually I probably have maybe, but uh, oh well, I like them at least. And people don't expect them, so at least I find them to be effective. If more people use them, then they would probably not be as good, because people would actually expect them then. So actually I take that back, don't use flint nets. <laughs> no, just kidding, use them as much as you can. Well, actually don't do that, but whatever. Use them when you see fit, is what I'm trying to say. As much as you can, well, it might be a bit of an oracle. So he can't attack me. Well, he can, but uh, that would be a bad idea. Because I have a large army and I have Polintonans shooting stuff. So uh, the longer death lasts, the better for me, I suppose. And that's bad for him, so he's basically going to be forced to run out and at least try to kill those Polintonans. I am going to run in and kill his base. Uh, Hippogans are quite nice in buildings, as you can see, mainly because of their speed, but also they do quite a bit of damage, of course. So I'm trying to kill those stables there, basically just sacrificing those pipkins because I have so many resources now anyway that I can just make them again. And I'm even killing that uh, town center there. Actually, I think... No, that's not the same town center. Uh, it's not as different one from... Uh, Earlier, we must have rebuilt that door. I think we would have seen it otherwise. So yeah, now I actually lose my army. Uh, a minor setback, would uh, I would say, to lose my army. Uh, obviously, I am in H4 with uh, what's that? Sixty thousand resources. So. Uh, I can reproduce it quite fast, but still, uh, of course, never optimal. I'm going to try to kill that market guy now, seeing as his attention is focused other places, that being the other side of the map. Unfortunately, I actually run into his army, so that won't work very well. He seems to have rebuilt that wall too. I'm looking for a way through, but I don't think I find one. Also, we've got to be sh careful with my uh, rally point there for my infantry. Don't want them. Don't want them to go out and get killed. I was actually looking for a. I mean, I thought there was a gap between the forest and the wall there, but turns out it wasn't. So that kind of failed. But, here's something nice, I actually intercept uh, his archers, and I'm able to kill a lot of, lot of those, especially seeing as I have other shipigans coming from uh, south here. So all of those archers will die, and uh, most of the infantry too, I believe. He seems to have been going for a actually the same strategy I was trying to do, by attacking a different place than last time. Uh, I kind of interrupted that, and uh, now I saw my capital was forced away, but I still killed a lot of units. And yeah, he rebuilt that wall. My score is quite a bit larger than his hit now, though. His score is all the way down into the orangish red color there. That's not something we want to happen. Obviously, again, score isn't everything, because he certainly is still able to put up a fight. But it uh, it does feel good to have <laughs> that score advantage, of course. And it is a sign that you might be winning. Now you can see the game is approaching the one hour mark, so... The video will actually be over soon. That actually went faster than I thought. Uh, I'm basically just hacking away his walls now and killing the remains remains of his army. Um, he does resign too, I think. Killing his talents to there and... Even though 
He has a bowl of, a bowl of archers there, and I think I'm still able to kill most of those. There goes that, that town center. I'm just spamming those hoplites again. Very nice uh, spammable, unit, spammable unit, as I have said several times before. Even getting academy upgrades, because why the hell not? I'm even spending more hoplites there because I actually think most of them died. Or actually, they're just on their way to the base, they're not that fast. But my other units died. So I should actually maybe make some uh, archers. And that is what I'm intending to do now. Unless I wasn't, because I wasn't. But <laughs> whatever. I at least collected the archer rangers, and yeah, there I cancelled some of those hoplites to. Uh, replace them with uh, Gastrophetus. Gastrophetus? I don't know how to pronounce that actually, but you know what I mean. The long range cross moment kind of unit. So, we are over the one hour mark now. And the game is basically over, I think. Uh, at least if you look at the scores, it is over. And one final last push should actually be enough to probably force him to resign. His army is, uh, not his army, but I mean his base is uh, kind of small right now actually. He's, the north part of his base is basically done, I think. And I control pretty much half of the map. That northern zone being quite neutral, I suppose. There is actually his army, he seems to be making a final push for it. Now I actually do seem to outnumber him though. I'm pushing forward with my cavalry act and they actually do kind of die. But I'm still able to kill his other units and now I can kill those archers as well. Even the Palintman is helping a bit. I have my second Palintman coming now too to Assault his buildings because basically uh, that's what's keeping him alive at this point. Just spamming units. I suppose that's what is what keeps people alive most of the game, but uh, still. Yes, so there actually goes that stable at least. His army is dying. They my. Uh, Hoplites are actually doing fairly well against the Castro uh, in part due to the nice Pierce armor they got from their champion upgrade, which is actually quite helpful. I'm uh, killing his last town centers there as well, so yeah, it's pretty much over now, I think. And he's, yeah, he's actually building a tower inside my base and it's assaulting my buildings with a builder. But anyway, there he finally does resign. And that was a pretty good game, I think. Uh, most of the time he was actually attacking me, but I was able to push him back. <laughs> he said GG with a couple of punctuations after it. And I think I would be a bit annoyed if I lost a one hour long game as well. But I actually did win it, which is nice for me. Especially considering the fact that I actually played a game against this same guy earlier and got owned. <laughs> so it was nice to get some revenge. So yeah, uh, that is that game. And uh, yeah, pretty good one. I hope you found this uh, helpful or entertaining or whatever. It was nice to be able to discuss those... Uh, champion upgrade as well. I was actually intending to make a separate video about it, but uh, never got a chance to do so. So I'm, I did it now, and there's his tower and stuff. That's kind of funny, I suppose. So yeah, uh, this video has gone on for long enough, I think. So I will end it with that. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you in the next one.